Hi guys, welcome to Zoo View. Uh, my name is Peter, I'm the educational coordinator here, as well as kind of one of the general zookeepers here. Uh, if this is one of your first times, welcome. Uh, if you're one of our many top viewers, welcome back. I am glad you guys are enjoying them. Uh, today we're up here in the petting zoo. It's uh, one of the hot items, especially for kids nowadays, is the petting zoo. And uh, here in my hand here, I have marshmallow. And Marshmallow is one of our petting zoo animals, uh, lives up in the barn here. Marshmallow is a Flemish giant. Uh, now there are over 49 different breeds of domesticated rabbits. So this is not a type of rabbit you'll see out in the wild anywhere in the world. Uh, a lot of the animals here in the petting zoo are a domesticated animal, which means they have some sort of function for a human. For Flemish giants and uh, Marshmallow and his breed, uh, he's a meat rabbit. So different parts of the world uh, in different parts in America, you can actually breed these rabbits for meat, just like how you could breed a cow for beef. Uh, there are, like I said, there are over 49 different breeds of rabbits, and each one kind of has their own special, unique features. Like I said, there are meat rabbits. There are also kind of sport rabbits that are arched for hopping. So a hopping rabbit is an animal that has big back legs and a big uh, arching back where they can actually jump over just like an agility show for a dog. There are also rabbits that have really long hair, like different types of Angora rabbits. And just like any item you might hear that is Angora, either from a sheep Angora or an Angora rabbit, you can actually brush out that Angora fur and use it, spin it down to make different sort of items, just like blankets, hats, scarves, gloves, other things like that. So rabbits are actually a really a unique animal uh, because they serve a lot of different purposes here. Now marshmallow is really special because Flemish Giants are one of the largest breeds of domestic rabbits. They can top out at almost 20 pounds and uh, live about 8 to 10 years. And marshmallow is really special because he's an albino rabbit. So if Austin gets pretty close here, if you see, he has those red eyes. Marshmallow here is the only albino animal we have here at the park. I know a lot of people see a lot of those white animals out in the safari or around the zoo but he's the only true albino animal. And albino means they lack melanin. And melanin is what gives skin pigment its color. So with lacking that melanin, he has that reddish or pink eye. Now marshmallow, that's all we have for marshmallow here. But today I'm accompanied with Jacob here. And Jacob is our petting zoo manager. So we have a lot of animals up here in the petting zoo. And Jacob's gonna take us away with uh, one of them that we're standing in right now and a couple of the other ones through our zoo view today. All right, hi guys, like you said, I'm Jacob. I'm the petting zoo manager. Behind me today, I do have six of our alpacas. Here at Lake Tobias, we have what's known as the Surrey alpaca. There is another type of alpaca out in the world known as the Hakaya alpaca. The major difference between those guys is in their coat. Now it's gonna be pretty hard to tell with our alpacas today right now, just because these guys, they just got a haircut about a month ago. I know a lot of us are wishing we could get a haircut right now, but our guys came in gave these guys a nice little shear to make them comfortable here for the summer. So if these guys didn't have that haircut, you guys would be able to see their hair, or actually their wool, is almost rope-like. It gets very long and little thin strands. Now the Hakaya alpaca is actually more fuzzy. It kind of reminds me of a teddy bear. It's very fuzzy and fluffy, but they do serve the exact same function. So your alpacas, they're raised for that wool. Here at Lake Tobias, we don't actually use their wool for anything. We just have it sheared off, so like I said, they're nice, nice and comfortable here in the summer months, but a lot of people will actually use it for kind of similar to what Peter was saying with the rabbit fur. They can actually spin hats, gloves, blankets. It's actually very prized and very expensive. It's very warm and cozy. A little bit even better than some of your sheep's wool. Now, as you can see, these guys, they stand about two to three feet tall and they can weigh anywhere from about 120 pounds up to 200 pounds, especially the males. They do get a lot bigger than the female. They come in about two or three different colors, white, tan, brown, and kind of everything in between. And if you guys can get a look at their little hooves there, they are split. And it actually allows them to uh, travel, excuse me, on the terrain a lot better. These guys are from South America. They live near the Andes. So it is a very rocky terrain. So it actually allows them to move and function a little bit better. Now, like I said, we have six of them up here today. Two of them actually were bottle babies. We have Quinn and Coco. It doesn't look like anyone's anyone wants to come over today, but you guys can see we do have a little baby hiding there in the back. She was born sometime this off season, I believe it was around in December, and their gestation period, their uh, pregnancy is actually about 11 months. 
So we won't be expecting any more baby alpacas for about another year or so. Now that is all I have for our alpacas here. Uh, like I said, we have our six, they stay in this pen here. But we're gonna walk down here in our petting zoo to show you guys some more of our goats and our sheep. So Jacob, as we make our way down here, um, I was holding marshmallow. Uh, what, do you guys, what do you do to take care of marshmallow here at the zoo? So marshmallow, I'm sure Peter can tell you he was covered in fur. Yes. So we will give him a brushing, we'll pat him, we'll give him some love, as well as we do some enrichment with our rabbits. So inside there, they're gonna get different kinds of toys, little puzzle games, they'll push, uh, move puzzles, spin puzzles, balls, different food, stuff like that will come out as well. Um, they, Peter uses them in his education outreaches, yes. so they get to go out. Um, other than that, if anyone comes into our petting zoo, or like we did last year, we'll actually pick them up for you guys to feel, pet them as well. Um, nail care as well, we do need to trim off some of their nails and their teeth. Their teeth are constantly growing, so they need things to chew on. So we'll put different toys, wood blocks, stuff like that. They'll chew them down, it keeps their teeth nice and filed as well. Yeah, that, uh, that big word, there's a word called malocclusion. Um, that's when your the teeth overgrow and that becomes an issue, uh, malocclusion, uh, is when their teeth overgrow and they don't line up. For an animal like a rabbit that has to break down their food uh, and they actually uh, will poop, special poop uh, called coprophagy and they'll actually re-eat that poop, uh, which is kind of gross, but it helps to get more of the nutrients that they didn't get the first time around. So those teeth got to be really flat and even to really grind up and break down all that food. So it can become a pretty big issue if they have any dental issues. So I just wanted to pull some of these guys over. Right here are two of our desert painted sheep. So here, up here in the petting zoo, we have one type of sheep. Our desert painted sheep, our pygmy goats, and our Nubian goats. And I'll go into all of them here. But while these two are standing right here in front of us, we'll talk about our desert painted sheep. This is Carmela, and this right here is Lucy. So they're desert painted sheep. They actually do originate here in the United States, down in the Texas area. And they were actually a bred, <laughs> they're bred of all sorts of different kinds of sheep. There's too many to list really, but they were pretty much bred to serve as a function as a petting zoo animal. And actually here I'm trying to get butt out of the way is Granny. But they're meant to be here in the petting zoo. So they are pretty calm, pretty docile animals. And as well as you guys can start to see, their coats actually are falling off. They shed naturally. And that's pretty weird. Most people actually know that our sheep, they usually have to be sheared. They have to get that wool taken off. Now your desert painted sheep were actually bred naturally for those clumps to fall off. So if you get a look at some of our guys around here, you will see clumps are starting to fall off. They naturally do it. And it's a lot easier for us to take care of them here at the park because we don't have to get them sheared and it keeps them more comfortable. Now, as you guys can see, average heights for these guys is about a foot and a half to maybe two feet. The males will get a little bit higher and about anywhere from 120 up to maybe 200 pounds to some of those larger males. Now, both your males and your females do grow horns, but as you can see, this here's a female. They don't get very large. They're pretty small little nubs or like this one over here. They don't really get them at all. Now, this right here is actually a little boy. You can see his nubs are already coming in. They're already the size of her. She's about a year old. They get a lot bigger. They're gonna get almost maybe about a foot, maybe even larger, depending on how big that male grows. The main purpose, like I said, is petting zoo, but they are also fed for uh, meat as well because they do get pretty large for there. And the same thing as our alpacas. They do have those little hooves there that have the little slit in the center. It lets them be a little better for the terrain. Now that's all I have for our sheep right here. I will switch over. We'll walk over here. Peter here is holding one of our baby Anubians, so we're gonna jump in with him. This little one was born about, I'd say maybe a week or two ago. This is Roxy, that real big one right over there. She just had two, a baby boy and a baby girl. And so the little Nubians, the big characteristic is one they are bigger than our pygmies, but it's these nice floppy ears. And they really don't serve any purpose except they look pretty cute, so everyone likes those long floppy ears like a dog. And color-wise, it's going to be brown to black and everything in between. You can get some different kinds of spots, white spots, different things like that. Um, but your Nubians, they're going to get to be about Roxy size. Again, about a foot and a half to two feet. And their weight-wise, it can be anywhere from about 130 up to 200, maybe larger for the males, depending on how big they get. The major reasons for these Nubians for their breeding process um, they're actually from uh, England, they're grown in British. They're a meat goat, so that's why they are so large. So they're gonna be used for that, but they can also be used for milking. So as you guys can see, everyone here in the petting zoo's pretty much had a baby now, pretty close, so their udders are very full. If here at Lake Tobias, if you were to continue to keep releasing those udders to keep milking them, they produce milk their entire life. Now here at Lake Tobias, we don't need it for them to be producing milk the entire time. 
So we'll actually just let them go. They'll dry up on their own until they're ready for the next pregnancy. Speaking of pregnancy with the Nubians, they're about every five months as well. So Roxy just had hers. That means in about another five months or so, she'll have another batch. They usually have two kids and that's what they are called. They are called kids. So most of these goats are gonna have about two sets every year. Now, like I said, both your males and your female goats will also get horns and they also get a lot more impressive. Roxy here is a female and you can see how long her horns get. So there really isn't a way to tell a difference between a male and a female goat with their horns. And that's also true for the pygmy goats, which are these little guys running all around us. We do have more pygmy goats than anything up here in the petting zoo. Um, same thing, they actually are bred for the same reasons as our Nubians. The pygmies are actually raised for meat as well, but they can also be milked too. Same thing, they get the nice horns, male or female. And the sizes kind of just depend on the genes, depending on how big horns mom and dads were. It depends how big they're gonna get. They use the horns for playing defense as well. So we don't have anything they need to defend themselves from here up in the petting zoo. But instead, these guys like to play. And when they do play, they butt horns. Actually, our male's right there as he turns away, but you can see how impressive his horns get. So the males will get kind of bigger horns, but everyone will get ones here. Um, Height-wise, you can see pygmies are about a foot to half, a foot and a half here. Uh, Weight-wise, 30 to 60 pounds, just depending. Um, and everyone up here has had pretty much a baby so far. We've had an average about maybe 20 this year, which is pretty or pretty common for us here at Lake Tobias. Um, the pygmy and goat gestation, their pregnancy as well as five months. So it's very similar between the Nubian and the pygmy, just size-wise as well. Um, so we will expect all these guys, all these little girls and all these moms to actually have babies one more time this year. Now, uh, other stuff, a lot of the care that we do with these pygmy goats, they are pretty low maintenance. Um, they shed a little bit, but nothing like the desert painted sheep. They're just naturally, they're gonna shed some of that winter coat off. A lot of the stuff here we do at Lake Tobias, we're gonna round all these up, uh, round up all these guys later this week. Actually, we're gonna give them a vaccine just because they did have all these babies. We're gonna make sure everyone's nice and protected here, as well as trimming the, those hooves. Just because our ground here, as you can see, it is dirt. They're not um, using them as much. We wanna make sure nothing gets too long. Other than that, with the care of these guys, we feed them different grains, hays, and then like Peter has right now, we do give them fruits and veggies now and then for occasion as a little treat. Um, and other than that, they do like to rub their horns. So if you guys actually take a look at our barns and some of the stuff around here, you will see. It's pretty worn down. They like to rub their horns down as well. Um, but other than that, these pig, uh, the goats as well were also bred for petting zoo reasons. As you guys, some of you guys have been here at Lake Tobias, they're pretty friendly little going guys. They don't mind too much. They're just really interested in the food. And that's all I really have for these guys. I'll take it over to Peter. If you want to ask questions or whatever. Yeah, uh, I think we are got to our question time. Uh, so, Jan, what do we have for uh, the people today? Jennifer is asking for her eight-year-old, do the alpacas ever spit? The alpacas can spit. So the alpacas, they're actually in the camel family with the llamas. Now our alpacas, they spit for defense and it's usually at other alpacas. So if they're not getting along, they're gonna spit at each other. When your alpacas spit, at first it might just be a shot of air. Nothing really comes out, maybe a little bit of saliva. But if you were to keep going up and pestering and pestering, then they can actually bring stuff up from their stomach and spit that out as you as well. And they're pretty accurate as well. They can spit for about five to six feet away. So more like throw up. More like throw up at sometimes, sure. yes. <laughs> Sherry wants to know, do the babies get along okay with the other adults? They do. Um, now, like everyone knows, there's protective moms out there. I'm sure a lot of our goats up here are. So if anyone's chasing after her little babies or anything like that, they might shoo the other one away, but there's really no big fights. They actually will take turns. They'll cry out for each other and you'll actually see if you do hear some crying out here, it's actually usually because if the baby gets separated, mom's calling them back in. So they're very protective moms, but no big fights really. They'll just keep an eye out for each other. Uh, what other kind of duties do you have, Jacob, as a kind of petting zoo manager here? So as my petting zoo manager, I'm overseeing this department and the people that work in it here today. So cleanings, um, births, deaths, all sorts of different kinds of stuff. Every aspect of it I oversee. But uh, um, a lot comes down to just the amazing team I have up here. So cleaning out those stalls and stuff like that, I'm up here doing it with them. 
um, scheduling, any other concerns, stuff like that kind of goes through me. I relate them back to our animal curator and we get see that it gets fit. Um, but like I said, we have an amazing team up here in the petting zoo, um, an off-season team as well with our farm crew as well that does an amazing job making sure everyone's staying nice and healthy. And I just happen to help oversee that as well as watch over these guys as well. So I know in a, one of our previous zoo views, it was Mother's Day, we had that little baby um, mm -hmm. goat. Uh, so you're probably one of the first ones to just notice it because you were up here mm -hmm. um, clean, just knowing that you know mom wasn't doing this. I say job. so with that, our baby animal department is the ones that will then care for them. So anyone's up here that we see um, pygmy goats, we usually don't have any problems. That was actually our first one here in a while at the park that we actually had to take down to our baby animal department. But anyone, desert painted sheep, a baby alpaca we've had before, any concerns, health problems, mom not caring for it. Um, any other reason like that, we'll take them down to our baby animal department and they do an excellent job bottle raising them and looking for out for them in their lives. Although we will look to see if we can bring them back up here and they usually do come back up now and then. But yes, that's what up here in the petting zoo, we're constantly keeping our eyes out for those different health concerns and things like that. Another uh, question for you, nurse, Jacob. Uh, do we sell any of the goats if we have too many? As we pets. We will sell our goats. Um, I know it was mentioned in, with our safari one that uh, over the years Lake Tobias has a lot of connections with other zoos and other local farms and stuff like that. So usually if they're being sold they will go out to those guys. But I have um, before people have been interested in our animals and if they contact the park they can see if we're selling at that moment. As you can imagine having 20 babies right now that means everyone up here will probably have another set, another two here. So we do get lots of goats. So they usually are sold to other zoos, other petting zoos, other wildlife yeah. parks. Um, but the occasional customer can come in now and then, maybe if we're selling them at that time. Okay, Allura wants to know how many baby goats do you have right now? I can't say a definite because we just had, and she's actually in the barn stall right now, we had another two this week, another two Nubians. So I know total right now, four Nubian babies. If I had to guess right now with our pygmies, that's why we're actually catching them up this week to get a final count and our vaccines and our hoop trims. We're probably an average right now 20 if not more at this point. We think there might be another one or two that still need to have right now, but we'll get a final number here once we round them up on Friday. Lori wants to know if you have a favorite. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, I think my favorite up here would probably be Roxy, our largest newbie in here that we've had here for a while. She's a pretty sweet one. Those are her two babies on the bottom there. Um, an excellent mom. She's almost like a dog really coming up to you guys and petting with you, but it's hard to say a favorite out of the entire park as well, but she's pretty got a pretty special spot in my heart. Now, I know I, I might have missed this, but um, did you talk about the other uh, animals here at the zoo? Because if Austin turns around here, we do have two other uh, animals in the petting zoo. Uh, these are not spotted goats. What are these here, Jacob? So up here we have a small fallow deer herd. So they're usually out back in our pasture. So if you come during the season, they're not actually out here with you guys, but we do have our back gate open right now. The fallow deer here on the left, is the small herd and this right here is Giselle. She's our one axis deer that we have in the petting zoo with us. She was actually one of those baby cases. Her mom actually did not care for her. So baby department actually took her in, bottle raised her and now she's actually part of our department up here in the petting zoo just because how friendly she is. Um, just a little thing about the deer up here, the spots are not because they're young. They actually keep those spots their entire lives. Your fallow deer are from over in Europe and the Axis deer, I believe, is from Asia as well. So just a little bit thing about them. If you guys have any questions about them, feel free to ask, but I won't get into all their different information. And I know we have a couple other species in here in cages. People always want to know if they <laughs> could be pet too. So up here we have ringtail lemurs, actually just right for, directly behind us, which you already did a special about. Yep. So the ringtail lemurs are located in the petting zoo. We have debraz monkeys as well, and brevet monkeys. Now, obviously we can't be petting those guys, but they are up here in the petting zoo. Um, we oversee them, we'll keep our eye on them, but any health concerns, any issues, go to our zookeepers, Peter, myself, if we're in that department that day. They come up, they do the diets and care for that, but we'll just keep our eyes on that. Other than that, what really fills up this barn over here is our baby animals. We do have, like Peter showed you, our rabbits. We have Marshmallow, our uh, Flemish giant. He has two buddies, they're loppy-eared rabbits. We have Barney and Rudy in there with him. And then the only other animal dedicated to the petting zoo is Tinkerbell, our dwarf pony, and she's actually running around here somewhere. So maybe if she comes up, we'll see her, but she lives in the barn. 
other than that, these other stalls, they're empty for baby animals. Um, it's getting to be Kelsey, our baby animal curator's busy time. She will move them up as she sees fit. So like that little pygmy goat that we have down there, he'll probably come up here eventually into a stall maybe, um, but they stay empty as well as for anyone that gives birth or any other health concerns. If anyone here were to get a bloody horn or something like that, they get moved into a stall, we'll assess them and then we'll go from there. So we do try to keep a stall empty just because we do have so many animals out here. Um, as well as we usually have a camel. Now sadly we don't have one quite yet just due to everything that's going on in the world. We haven't been able to get one here at Lake Tobias quite yet. We'll keep our eyes out but we do usually have a camel up here in the petting zoo as well. Awesome. Jan, do you have any others right now because I know we're getting close on time. I just have one more. Which one is the easiest to take care of? Easiest to take care of? Um, the goats and the sheep, they, uh, the care that we really need to provide for them is just the food and the water. So like I had mentioned, they get fed grains, corns, the occasional fruit and veggie now and then. And then it's a light brush. We'll trim their hooves once a year and their vaccines usually once a year as well. And they're usually pretty good, good to go. No major concerns otherwise with those guys. So they relatively are the easiest, as well as just the most easygoing. They're gonna be out with us, um, as well as health concern wise. They don't usually get too many health problems. Like I said, we'll have the occasional, maybe a bloody horn here or there, but nothing too crazy up here with these guys. They're pretty relatively easy to care for. Awesome, Jacob, thank you for your time. Um, as always, if there are any more questions following in, we will do our best to answer them in the chat. And as always, Connect, protect, and change, uh, especially these animals up here. Um, I'm a big proprietor and like to support 4-H and 4-H programs. Uh, if you have the space and you have the time, get into 4-H kids. It's really, really worth it. Um, I used to help out a lot with the rabbits. Uh, rabbits were kind of my specialty for a whole bunch of years. Um, but there are 4-H for rabbits, 4-H for goats, 4-H for sheep. You can get big things like uh, cattle and pigs and things like that. And there's a lot of people out there that will help you. And you can make a big difference in your own community by donating your time and things like that. And you can always make a difference in our world. So always never pollute and never litter. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. I know we have been getting a lot of questions about when we were opening and anticipating to open. Uh, so uh, we want you here as soon as you guys want to be here. We, we want to open as fast as possible for you guys. And with that being said, our board of directors and trustees are working really hard with our local government as well as our state government and county government to do our best to open up as soon as possible. The anticipation is uh, about a week and a half to two weeks out. So once again, always continue to look at our Facebook as well as our website for any new updates. But we are anticipating uh, hopefully around June 5th to open. I said anticipation. We are not fully dedicated to that date yet, but anticipating for that day, which is really exciting because we want you here. And as always, it will never be um, for right now the same as what it was last year. It will be a little different just for the safety of you guys and as well as our animals. So thank you guys for coming out. Uh, come back Friday for another zoo view and enjoy the rest of your week. All right, guys? Thank you. Can you stop